Good morning. Welcome to the 2021 Cum Laude Society Induction Service in the Frank D. Ashburn Chapel. Let us remember that at Brooks School, we live and learn on land once of the Penacook people, and we acknowledge their enduring presence. The Cum Laude Society was founded in 1906 to recognize academic excellence in the secondary school student population. This ceremony and the reception that would typically follow in spirit are demonstrations of our enthusiastic commitment to honor scholastic achievement at Brooks School. To our guests all across the world, thank you for celebrating with us. We'll begin with a performance by Concert Chorale entitled The Road Not Taken by Ruth Elaine Schramm, directed by Mr. Griffin. That was beautiful, thank you. It is now my honor 
to introduce my brilliant colleague, Mr. Randall Hesse. Mr. Hesse taught at the Haverford and Lawrenceville schools before looking to relocate back to Greater Boston where he was raised. We owe a debt of gratitude to a former colleague of Mr. Hesse's who described Brooks as a school where the students go to chapel and sing the hymns. Thank goodness this proved irresistible to our most enthusiastic choral contributor. Upon arrival in 2001, Mr. Hesse was delighted to find that hymns are even sung at Brooks basketball games, still true today. Lucky, lucky us, for over the past 20 years, Mr. Hesse has taught both chemistry and physics at every level, deftly guided the robotics program, chaired the science department, and led by example as an endowed shareholder. His winter term courses have included sports science, forensics, Lego engineering, and one on ancient history cleverly titled Swords and Sandals. He has coached JV boys lacrosse, football, and girls varsity lacrosse. Having served as his assistant, I can attest that Coach Hesse is a straight up genius when it comes to X's and O's. He has served as a dorm parent in Peabody for all 20 years, living there and raising his children under that roof for 10 of them. Those young Hesse children grew up to be Jake, who graduated in 2016, and Maddie, who graduated last year in 2020. Mr. Hesse is a proud father who reflects fondly on the experiences of sharing four years of football with Jake, a talented quarterback, and teaching Maddie, an impressive academician in AP physics. He is grateful to his wife, Julia, who has been the consummate boarding school spouse. She has embraced living on campus as an opportunity to go out to dinner with friends every night. And of course, Lady the Dog completes the picture. As the Hesseys move on from Brooks next year in pursuit of new life adventures in Boston proper, we will miss them dearly. Room 104 will never be the same without afternoons of board games like Seven Wonders, spirited physics demonstrations, or the imparting of humble wisdom from our beloved mentor, teacher, and colleague. Mr. Hesse, we are excited to hear your message for the inductees today. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Randall Hesse as our 2021 Cum Laude Society speaker. Every time it happens, I find myself wondering if the other drivers realize what's going on inside my car. Between the highway speeds and the windshield's glare, I figure at most they might notice the frantic working of my mouth, the rhythmic jerking and bobbing of my head. I doubt they ever see the moist redness of my eyes, the glistening tracks on my cheeks. But still, I always wonder. I got here like I always do, through a familiar sequence. Alone in my car, I turn on the radio to pass the miles. In no time, I find myself singing along, more often than not in the eerie falsetto harmonies that drive my wife and kids crazy when they're along for the ride. But this time, I'm alone in the car, and I really let loose. I'm never at it for long before it happens. I'm right in the middle of belting out a tune at the top of my lungs, when suddenly my breath catches in my throat and the next note dissolves into a choking sob. Something in the music has caught me off balance, a poignant lyric, a heartfelt melodic hook, or maybe just a chord change from major to minor. And without warning, the music has catapulted me out of my present and into an emotionally resonant moment from my past. Maybe it's the moment of embracing my son on the Brooks graduation stage, my heart bursting with pride. Or maybe it's the moment when I realized that the pandemic would rob me of that experience with my daughter. Maybe it's the last time that my late father-in-law took my hand as if to shake it, only to pull me in close for a warm, lasting hug that was manly in the very best sense of the word. Maybe it's one of the countless times when my neglect, stubbornness, or some other failing brought pain to those I love the most. Or maybe it's one of the universe of blissful moments where those who love me brought me joy. 
Whatever memory the music has awakened, here I am again, crying and singing, singing and driving, driving and crying. If you're thinking that last part probably belongs in a country song more than a cum laude address honoring academic excellence, you're not wrong. And you could certainly be forgiven for asking yourself why the physics nerd is getting all emo and talking about the emotional power of music. I could offer you a safe answer to that question, retreating into the comfort of my own academic realm and telling you that physics and music have been inextricably intertwined since humans first began their quest to unravel the workings of our universe. Early astronomers and natural philosophers, the predecessors of today's astrophysicists, spoke of the music of the spheres, or as Kepler put it, the harmonicus mundi, that tied the motions of the planets to the scientific and mathematical theories of musical harmony. The periodic table of the elements is based on the work of John Newlands, who coined the law of octaves when he discovered that the chemical elements, when laid out in order of increasing atomic mass, repeated patterns of similar characteristics at regular intervals, just like the notes on a piano keyboard. The arcane science of quantum physics stems from an understanding that electrons are locked into a fixed number of wave-like states that bear an uncanny resemblance to the patterns of frequencies, of harmonics and overtones, that give a vibrating guitar string or a saxophone reed its unique sonic color. The massive leaps of understanding and imagination that gave birth to modern astronomy, chemistry, and quantum physics might never have been achieved were it not for the ability of great scientists to think like musicians. The study of music, or for that matter, any of the arts, invites you to think differently looking at problems with new perspectives, and cultivating solutions through unique approaches. Practicing the arts carves new neural pathways into the fabric of your brain, accessing modes of cognition not normally activated in the study of other disciplines, almost literally broadening your mind and making you a more flexible, more nimble problem solver. This in turn, can make you a more capable engineer, a more insightful analyst, a more dynamic surgeon. Now, in speaking to those assembled in the chapel today about the value of arts, I understand that I'm probably preaching to the choir. At the very least, I am literally preaching to the concert chorale. Today's inductees into the Cum Laude Society have earned their place in this esteemed company through the pursuit of excellence through many years and across many disciplines, no doubt, including the arts. However, as you approach the next stage of your education, you stand at something of a crossroads. You've no doubt already felt the pressure to focus your studies toward a potential college major or even a future career. Maybe you've even been encouraged to put aside further study in the arts in order to load up on more academic courses. There's no shortage of irony in that phrase, since the word academic stems from the Greek akademia, the name of a school founded by Plato in Athens around 370 BCE. The school's curriculum, based around ideas championed by Socrates in the Republic, consisted of mathematics, gymnastics, or more broadly, sports and physical education, dialectics, meaning logic and debate, and, you guessed it, music. For Socrates, music wasn't simply a diversion or a form of recreation. Music's unique ability to promote discipline, balance, order, and virtue in the developing mind made the study of music an integral part of education. Considering the potential of music and the arts to foster new ways of thinking, brings to mind a conversation I once had with Doug Burbank, a colleague of mine who recently moved on from Brooks. During his time here, Mr. Burbank taught math, art, computer science, and even, at one point, physics. Mr. Burbank and I were talking about how to teach critical thinking, 
an overused buzzword that is often mistakenly understood to mean any form of higher level thinking. Technically, critical thinking refers specifically to the process of thoughtfully weighing alternatives in order to choose the best option. And I was worried that the science department, in the science department, we didn't spend enough time modeling and teaching such decision-making skills. Mr. Burbank responded that in teaching art, that was all he did. Because fundamentally, making art was making choices. So, according to two of the ancient world's greatest thinkers, Socrates and Doug Burbank, Music can make you a better critical thinker. It can make you a better pediatrician. It can make you a better stockbroker or a better CEO. And therefore, it can make you mo money. <laughs> Enough said, mic drop. <laughs> well, that's certainly true. That is a power of music, but it's not the power of music, or at least not the power of music I most want to talk about. I want to talk about the power of music to slip in through my unsuspecting ears, somehow bypassing the tangle of neurons in my conscious brain and shooting down my spine like a jolt of high voltage electricity that grips my heart, my guts, and even my lungs, reducing me to a sobbing wreck speeding down the highway. Now for me, it's music that most often has that effect followed closely by poetry, fiction, live theater, and film. For you, it might be painting, or dance, or sculpture. All of these artistic pursuits, along with history and languages, are collectively known in academia as the humanities. And that name didn't come about by accident. Experiencing the arts invites us to examine the elements deep within ourselves that make us truly human and allow us to reach out across the rifts of cultural differences, the chasm of geographic separation, and even the gulf of time itself to connect with the shared humanity we discover in an artist from another era, a different country, or an unfamiliar culture. Just like the protagonist of Bob Dylan's Tangled Up in Blue, we can find ourselves engulfed in the fiery illumination of a momentary connection with an Italian poet from the 13th century. Or maybe that transformative lightning flash of insight will connect you to a sculptor and metal worker from Minoan Crete, a choreographer turned abstract painter from modern Hunan, or a slide guitar player from 1950s Mississippi. These moments of connection enable us to grasp at the threads of a rich and timeless tapestry woven from the intersection of our common humanity and our brilliant, indelible differences, so worthy of celebration. In these moments, we understand that others have shared our joy and endured our suffering. We feel seen, heard, and understood we recognize that we have never been and will never be alone, that we are always floating in the warm and nourishing sea of shared human experience. Through moments like these, art can render you more fully, more vibrantly human, broadening and deepening your empathy for others while helping you to explore and to map the unknown regions of your own heart. Engagement with the arts doesn't have to take the shape of formalized study with a teacher as your guide. Though I hope you appreciate the magnitude of the opportunities you have had and may yet have to interact with skilled artists and passionate, dedicated teachers like the Brooks Arts faculty. And while it might seem like some minimum level of talent is a barrier to entry into the arts, I can tell you from experience that it's not. All you need to do is choose to keep a sketchbook or a poetry journal. Stash a guitar, or maybe two, in a corner of your room. Don't delete that short film you've been working on from your hard drive. Sing in the shower. 
Practicing the arts, even in the smallest of ways, can be an act of almost meditative devotion, bringing you a sense of calm, connecting you to something bigger outside of yourself, and allowing you to both separate yourself from your daily experience and to interrogate and process that experience in a transformative way. You may worry that the practice and study of the technical aspects of art, scales and chord structures in music, color theory in painting, stagecraft in theater, or even grammar in poetry, might reduce the artistic experience to mere mechanics and thus rob the arts of their romance, mystery, and emotional power. I can assure you that in my case, at least, the exact opposite has been true. Every tiny scrap of knowledge I can manage to absorb and assimilate only deepens my love and appreciation for the music, the poetry, the productions, or the paintings that I encounter. My slow, halting journey of discovery in the arts has been like my decades-long love affair with my dear wife, Julia. Each day brings new familiarity, a new awareness of some detail of her thoughts, her habits, her laughter, her walk. And yet I am perpetually awestruck, bewildered, and overcome by the miracle of her presence in my life. Just like any relationship, getting to know the arts can be work. But my friends, I can tell you, that work pays off. Before I conclude, I hope you will indulge me in a bit of a digression. At this point in my career, it seems likely that the next chance I might have to fill a space like this with people I care about so deeply will be at my funeral. And I have a feeling they won't let me speak at that. So I'd like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to the Brooks community. To my friends and colleagues on the Brooks faculty, you have challenged me, inspired me, supported me, and befriended me. Most importantly, you have partnered with my beloved wife and me in the raising of our two children. In your classrooms, on the playing fields, in your homes, and on the streets of this beautiful campus, you have guided them, encouraged them, disciplined them, and comforted them in ways that I never could. I hope you appreciate the value of the gifts that you have given me, gifts beyond reckoning that I could never repay. To all the students at Brooks, to those here now, and to those who have long since moved on, to those whom I, with whom I have lived, those whom I've taught and coached, and to all the others who have filled these fields and halls with your bountiful and indomitable spirit. For two decades, you have given my life shape and purpose. You have never refailed, you excuse me, you have never failed to repay my modest efforts tenfold with your passion, your determination, and your commitment. Your energy uplifts me. Your talents humble me. Your empathy and kindness make me proud to walk among you. Finally, to the great class of 2021. So many of you have touched my life during our years together by enlivening my classroom, by leading teams I've coached and dorms I've lived in, by sharing your talents with our community, or simply by exchanging friendly greetings with me. In the face of the immeasurable challenges of this pandemic year, our ongoing relationships have supplied the glimpses of normality that have sustained me. I owe you an incredible debt for the gifts of your humor, your wisdom, and your genuine caring and concern. Throughout our time together, you have slowly carved out a place in my heart where you will forever shine. So, if years from now you happen to pass me on the highway, it won't be difficult, we old people drive slow, 
and through the windshield glare, you see my wide open mouth, my heaving chest, and maybe just the slightest glint of a tear. Perhaps this time, the music has brought me back to this perfect moment in this sacred place with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hesse. What an incredible message for the class of 2021 and for us all, one of finding inspiration and beauty in the day-to-day -day pleasures of being uniquely human. Next, let us award the certificates. So Mr. Packard, you may assume the position. Student honorees, the distinguished record you have made at Brooks School has won for you membership in the Cum Laude Society. This society is a fellowship of scholars whose purpose is to recognize excellence in academic work. As you pursue your education, it is our hope that you will accept the honor of membership in this society as a responsibility to make a contribution to the ongoing search for greater understanding of humanity and society. The motto of the society is Erite Dike Time, excellence, justice, honor. Erite includes the concept of excellence in the moral sense and is not limited to the ideal of superiority and scholarship, nor does it involve the endeavor of competing primarily for academic goals. Dike includes the concept of what is suitable and appropriate as well as just. Time includes the concept of dignity and truth, as well as honor. In testimony of your admission to the Cum Laude Society, by the authority of the society duly granted, I now present to you these certificates of membership. Mr. Packard, will you please join me in honoring our students? Inductees, as your name is read, please come forward, some virtually, to accept your certificate and pin from Mr. Packard. To those gathered in support of our students from across the globe and in this chapel, you may cheer your loudest remotely and directly and put your positive energies their way. In other words, you may clap for each honoree. First up, Lyndon Tope Adamson. Abigail Sarah Charlam. <laughs> Bin Ho Yoon. <laughs> Emma Rose Fleischman. Jack William Frimmett. <laughs> Gabriella Grace Garozo. <laughs> Catherine Lindley Ingram. Celia Coburn Johnson. <laughs> Tane Venkut Kamaretti. Tin 
John Lau. Elizabeth O'Neill Packard. Nina Catherine Beige Rossback. Caroline Alexandra Samaluk. Anya Harsh Santorawala. Tian Yu Yang. Congratulations to our inductees and to their families. These students' dedication to their studies has not gone unnoticed. We will now sing our school hymn together, loud and proud, which can be found in the order of service. Please rise and body.
In the spirit of what Mr. Hesse has shared today, and in honor of the inspiration and exploration that helped our inductees earn the recognition they have just received, I offer you these poignant words from author Annie Dillard. How we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. Seniors, our hope for you is that you live fully in the present and appreciate the richness of existence. Congratulations to the Cum Laude Society Class of 2021. Your families and school community are so proud of you. Now go out into the world and be true to yourselves. Thus concludes the 2021 Cum Laude Induction Ceremony. Thank you for joining us and take care. Thank you.